The Not So Great Outdoors contains stories of a graphic nature. Viewer discretion is advised. The outdoors are great. Except when they're not. Welcome to the Not So Great Outdoors. We're your guides. I'm Piff. And I'm Sam. And welcome to episode 48. Yes. Piff, I don't think you're ready. Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty ready. I know you're pretty ready, but I don't think you're ready for this because I'm finally going to cover something that you've been asking me to do. You haven't asked me recently, I don't think, but you have asked me more than once in the past to do this, and I'm finally doing it. Okay. It's not Bigfoot. I'm just going to go ahead. That was where I was going, so I'm glad you said that. I was like, okay, what have I asked for? I did say paranormal. (laughs) Yes, it is paranormal. I have a ghost shirt on. You do. And I have a witchy shirt on. Yes. Is it Bell Witch? Yes. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I am covering very excited. the Bell Witch. Now, before we even dream of getting started, quick disclaimer. I don't know if you all know this, but Bell Witch is one of the most notorious hauntings in American history. There is so much material on the Bell Witch that it would be impossible for me to not have a bajillion quotes in these notes. So, with that said... And I'm prepared. My, well, my little journalism heart is about to break with this. However, in order to prevent me from having to say, according to so-and-so quote, unquote, a million times, seriously, this episode would probably be twice the length it's going to be if I did that. I am not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to. But I do have every single one of them that I used will be extensively <laughs> detailed in the blog. And I feel like this counts as a verbal citation saying, I do not own the rights. I do not own, you know, like I, I am. This entire episode is practically going to be a paraphrase of like at least five key things that I used. Because the same thing is found many places. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we cool with this? It'll be fine. Okay. So, or I can just say them all right now. Maybe say just the the sources are at the top so nobody sues us. I'll say them all right now. These are the sources used in this episode. These are the sources. And I'm not going to do very, mm, I think there might be like one direct quote. The rest of them are paraphrases and retellings of the things that I've found on these sources. Again, because there are literally so many that it's ridiculous. (laughs) It is unreal. This is a very well-researched and well-documented case. So, just so we all know. But also, know that this is deeply, deeply bothering me. (laughs) Okay? It's just, it's deeply bothering me. But, I mean, hey, we have a one-up on a lot of podcasts out there because a lot of them don't even say their sources on their on their podcast. A lot episodes. of podcasts don't like have a list of the sources they used at all, and yeah. it greatly bothers so, me. If someone has an issue with me with this, come at me, bro. Come at me because I'm at don't. least gonna. I mean, don't please. I will cry. Please don't. Like, I'll cry. But seriously, though, I feel like I feel like we're gonna be okay. Okay, so. My sources that I used the most extensively are bellwitchcave.com, the official, like the owners and people who who have the rights to that property right now, that's their website. So that is where I got the majority of like the legend, like the storytelling. So let me know. Um, Wikipedia, but only to get like a really good idea of the timeline. Timeline. So there's not a lot in here. Also, but Wikipedia I used is it. great for a timeline. It really is. So I used it mostly for the to make sure that I was getting that right and making sure I was understanding that. Travelchannel.com and um, Haunted Tennessee. Uh, Haunted Tennessee by Alan Brown. The book. It's really cool. I was cool. thinking this was... T- I was like, this is either Kentucky or Tennessee. I it knew Tennessee. it was like this general area. Yes, it is Tennessee. And so, yeah, those are the ones that I used the most. Um, I did look at other ones, but these, those are the ones that I feel like I gleaned the most from. And as always, full links in our blog post about yes, this episode. take you straight there. Also, bellwitchcave.com has photos of the Bell family cabin and like all, ev- everything that you need. I didn't feel the need to save those separately because you can go straight there to see their galleries and everything. So there you go. So with that being said, please don't get mad at me because I have cited my sources. 
I'm not doing direct quotes, but all of them are responsible for everything in this episode. Thank you. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. I'm really I'm excited glad. because I had no idea where we were going. And it's Spooktober. Spooktober. Second episode of Spooktober. I'm hyped. We I'm all just hyped. got paid. It's Friday when this comes out. Happy Woo! Friday, y'all. Yay. I'm um, so excited. Also, another disclaimer. Um, sorry if the audio is weird at any point in this episode. Or any of our episodes. Yes. We've met. We've come to our wits end trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So we're not sorry. We're not audio engineers. We're not professionals. We've no. done everything we can possibly think of. And sometimes it still does that weird echoey thing. We think it's the program we use, but we're poor and we can't afford another audio yeah. program. So. so we are aware of it. Thank you for people who have reached out. We've done our best to make sure that it doesn't impede your listening experience. Uh, but if it happens, know that we're sorry and we tried our best we tried our best and sometimes Thanks. we'll like cut out tangents because they're super echoey and it's not relevant but if it echoes on a key piece of information we have to leave it in yeah. so because we've all we have at one point record re-recorded an entire episode we've done it a couple of times yeah and i don't think i can mentally take it anymore if we can avoid it yeah <laughs> i'd rather not this is just a lot because you know it's never as good as the first time mm -mm. it's really not because um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but we ad lib everything. We do. And I react live to everything that Piff says. She reacts live to everything that I say. So the re recording doesn't really doesn't really work. Doesn't really work. So we do we do our best. Uh if you don't want to listen because of the echoing every once in a while, we totally understand. Um, hey, thanks. <laughs> but that's our blanket apology. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't know why I'm in, I, I wrote these notes knowing that I would be insanely nervous about the fact that I'm not going to say, according to so-and-so, it would literally be every other sentence. Like, it honestly, truly well, would. here's the thing. Because you're paraphrasing most of it, it's fine. I know. You cited the why. sources you I, used. I intentionally went in and paraphrased, but now I'm like, did I paraphrase every sentence? Did I do that? Did I go through every single thing and reword it? Now I'm like That's worried fine. about it. If somebody wants to sue a podcast with like like of our size, I mean there there are bigger fr fish out there to fry, yeah. and we at least cited our sources. We did verbally Go in the blog. Mind. I almost named one that doesn't ever and just has Google been sued. Podcast sued for plagiarism. You'll find you'll it. You'll find them. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. We're trying hard not to be sued here, but yeah. I, I think we're okay. And also, we're trying hard to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. And I mean, I did not go boots on the ground and research all this. I did not go to, what is it? Adams, Tennessee. I think Adam, Ten Adams, Tennessee. It's Robertson County, because at the time it was not the same name that it is now, but it's the same county, county name. So I did not go to Tennessee this week and, you know, figure this out. I'm not going, Piff. Damn it. I saw it. I was like, no. I was like, but we could, though. Okay, I would go to the cabin. I'm not going in the cave. Oh, God. You won't go in the cave I... that I worked in, but you'll go in that okay, one? Okay, first of all, I've been in that cave. I just don't okay, like okay. going into you it. You won't go back in that cave? I mean, I would. I have. There's nothing malicious in that cave. I don't agree. Okay, there's nothing that has actually like hurt me or anyone I know in that cave. Yeah, I'd still... I don't like that cave, but I've still like gone in it multiple times after knowing it was haunted because the first time I was ever in it, I learned it was haunted. Yeah. And then had to go back in it multiple times. That was that was not a good idea on my brother's part. Well, I mean, whatever. Okay. I like spooky things. He thought yes. I would enjoy that. I did enjoy it. I just, you know. Are you ready? <sighs> yes. Buckle up. I'm so excited. <laughs> We've got all the witchy stuff going on. I'm wearing Hocus Pocus shirt. And a shirt underneath this sweatshirt. And we're drinking Witching Hour wine. Perfect. Yes. Also, we're going to be reading The Shining. Do we know how right. we're doing this? No. Uh, no. There'll be an Instagram post. Check out our Instagram. Yeah. We're going to do book club. If you want to read The Shining with us, I got a co I got us copies at Target for like 11 bucks a piece or something. So let's, let's, let's go. dive in. I'm so excited. Okay. Bell Witch. Also, Bell, Bell Witch has nothing to do with the Blair Witch Project. Fun fact. I didn't think it did. No, I know. Oh, okay. I know. But like every time I, w I went to write The Bell Witch, I wanted to write The Blair Witch. I see. So just, just so you know, it's nothing to, you being listeners, uh, nothing to do with The Blair A Witch. A royal project. you, if A you royal will. royal you, yes. Okay. So, 
Here we go. I'm so excited. The Bell Witch, or the Bell Witch Haunting, is a legend surrounding the Bell family who lived in Robertson County, Tennessee in the 19th century, so the 1800s. The Bell Witch tr- really is like one of, it's, it's known as America's oldest ghost story. Like it, it's very notorious and it's well known and um, it's perfect for Spooktober. It is, it is perfect for Spooktober. And I can go ahead and tell you, I'm not going to do it justice like with this episode. Uh, honestly, if I wanted to do it great justice, we would do a series. But like, I just, I just can't. We don't have time for <laughs> we that. We don't have time for that. This so, is Spooktober. We're here Spooktober. for a short time and a fun time, not a long time, honey. Yeah. So um, I am giving you a high level, but look into yeah. it. It is crazy. Are there? I love it. You might have this in your notes, but are there any like movies or documentaries about it I that we can recommend name, to the people? Yes. Okay. Um, I think w- a movie was called An American Haunting. Okay. I think. I think that's the name. There are several. There are several books. This is also fun fact. It is one of the most well documented hauntings to take place in the United States, which makes that's sense. That's wild. That's and that's why there's so what, much out there. What year was it? Did you already say that? It's in the 1800s. 1800s. Uh, they were. That's still so kind of surprising, though, that that's the most well documented. Well, so the youngest Bell son at the time of the haunting um, kept a journal and like kept a diary. And so wrote a lot about it. And like people, and we'll kind of talk a little bit about this later, but like people who would come to experience it, come to see these weird things that were happening, would write letters. You know, like there's just a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of like witness accounts. Yeah. Yeah. That's really really cool. And so let's dive back into the Bell family and we'll kind of get a little further into that. So John Bell Sr. was a farmer from North Carolina and along with his wife and children, they settled in northern Robertson County, Tennessee, in 1804. Their farm consisted of 320 acres of rich farmland that laid along the Red River. They lived a pretty peaceful life for the first couple years that they, or for the first several years, really, that they lived in the area. Um, And they were members of Red River Baptist Church, where John became a deacon. I have a stupid question. Sure. Is uh, the Red River Gorge... No. Because of a red river? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, maybe, considering red river is part of the name. But yeah. I don't think it would be the very, I don't think it would be the same. Okay. Considering that's more eastern, not really northeastern Kentucky, but uh, central eastern Kentucky, and then. I feel like it's like south. I don't know. Central south Kentucky. Central, you think? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to Google. I'm not good with geography. Yeah, I just, you said Red River, and I was like, is that like Red the River Red Gorge? River Gorge? I don't think so. I think it's a different Red River, but I don't know. We can find out. The current quick update on, so originally they owned 320 acres. Over time, of course, I mean, that was in the 1800s. So over time, the acreage was parceled off and, you know, was sold to different people. But the original, well, okay. It's not the original cabin. It is a replica of the cabin that has elements from the original cabin in it is on the home place like it's so, on the property where the, ha- the home so like stood. the haunted cabin no longer stands but bits of it do bits of it do there's okay. like a not a cornerstone but there's like a chimney stone inside the replica there's um like a pot there's, there's like artifacts from the original and like that that the bell family owned inside the replica so but that still stands on the same I think the same piece of land, maybe not right in the exact same spot, but in the same property that the original cabin stood and the property that they still own. I think it's I think they own about five acres. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. That might be me making that up. But they own much less of that property now. Um, And it's the same river. Is it the same river? The the river that runs through Red River Gorge is also called Red River. And it goes to Tennessee. I'm checking that now. It's pretty close to Tennessee. Rivers on maps are not like well defined, so but it looks it looks like it's the same river. Crazy, cool. Uh, the say that property that you know you can go and visit that still that is I think it's owned by a conglomerate of people, but I think at least one or two is like descendants of of the Bell family, which is pretty cool. But they also included in that is the Bell Bell Witch Cave, which we'll and we'll touch on, and then also the family. Um, uh, the family cemetery. Because nothing bad ever happened having a cemetery on your property. I feel like that was the norm back then. It, I mean, it definitely was, but also just like, like maybe I not a good idea. Maybe not a good idea. Okay, so. I mean, maybe like your relatives who like died naturally in their sleep. Yeah, totally bury them on your family farm. But like, 
your relative who like died in a car accident or like a farming accident or you know how we will or how, what we're about to discuss we'll, maybe we don't maybe bury not. them on our property because though not. they're pretty restless yeah they were members of red river baptist church and john senior became a deacon there um in the late summer of 1817 events began taking place that would change the family forever they began seeing strange looking animals around the property not cryptids we'll get there but not cryptids late at night they started hearing knocking sounds on the doors and the outer walls of the house later the sounds were being heard inside the house sounds like inside the house the sounds were like rats gnawing on the um bedposts Chains being drugged through the house, stones being dropped on the wooden cabin floor. I don't like any of this. I know. Then gulping and choking sounds. Yeah. So that's um, just notoriously worse. demonic kind of sounds there. Yeah. Those last ones. Ugh. Um, Ugh. So again, oh they started goodness. on the outside and moved to the inside of the house. Can I change it real fast? Mm hmm. Uh, so I watched Ouija recently, and mm -hmm. at one point, the like possessed child is like, describing what choking to death feels like to oh. gun a, like teenage boy and that when you said like gurgling oh, or whatever oh, that's what oh. i thought of yeah no Ugh. no 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 nothing no. yeah i'm good <laughs> actually right, okay. the bell family they were terrified but they kept these events a secret for over a year probably because such things were pretty taboo in the 1800s and you know that kind of thing such things are pretty taboo now yeah like if you're being haunted you just move yeah but eventually, it got so bad that John Bell Sr. told their neighbor, James Johnson, he invited, he, okay, so um, Bell Sr. invited Mr. and Mrs. Johnson to stay the night. And after they witnessed these events for several nights, James mentioned he thought more people should be told. I'm sorry. Hi, neighbor. My house is, like, haunted. We're having all these, like, terrible times. Uh, do you want to come stay with us? I don't think that's how it went, but... That's how it sounds. I don't think that's how it went. <laughs> but he told them about the terrible things. I think... Okay, maybe I wrote that badly. And then but... said, hey, come stay with us. Yeah. James offered help, and so they were invited to come and stay to see what they were up against. Okay, see... That makes it a little bit better. Okay. Eventually, James Johnson, after he and his wife witnessed this for several nights, he mentioned that he thought more people should be involved. And so a committee was formed, and I'm assuming it was formed by people from the church. But people from the community were usually also the people from the church. So I think it's pretty safe to say that it covered both bases, probably. Yeah, I have a feeling that in a, is it like a small town? Yeah, I would assume so. Small town in northern Feels Tennessee. Like yeah. Uh, yeah, either way. There are people from the church. <laughs> and... Gathered up my friends. <laughs> Gonna go hunt a ghost. Yeah. Let's go. So eventually, the small town did what small towns do best, and word spread, and everybody knew about it. Um, people were coming from miles away to hear and witness this strange force. They, it kept being referred to as a force. and it, that, So the strange force that was terrorizing the Bell family. Well, and in like the 1800s, like that's a that's a journey yeah. to even just go a few miles because yeah. like you didn't have a car. Yeah. You had a horse, hopefully. Yeah. Um. So before long, and again, I think it I hadn't really mentioned this, but before long, the force, it's important to note that it was pretty much invisible for the most part. A lot of like disembodied voices once it came to that point, you know, a lot of things like that, but very rarely did it take a physical shape that you could see. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Was it moving stuff as well or was it more? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So over time and like as more people came to witness it, it gained more and more strength and developed a voice and then developed more things that it would do. Like it, it started doing more and more. Because when you give a spirit or demon an energy, entity, energy, an entity, that's the word I was it. looking for, it gets stronger, guys. Yeah. This is the perfect example of that. Maybe we don't do this. Mm -hmm. Perfect example of what not to do. <laughs> I so, mean, I'm glad they did because we I mean, have a yeah, great story. But like, yeah, guys. So but yeah, before long, it gained enough strength to develop a voice when asked who or what 
who and what it was. It gave different identities at first. It once stated that it was the witch of a neighbor woman named Kate Batts. I don't have a lot on Kate Batts. And from then on, the unseen force was called Kate, the Bell's Witch. So that's oh. how we got the Bell Witch. Okay. It was possessive when we dropped that because laziness. Yes. Yeah. So I'll refer to her as Kate for the most part now. Okay. Um, so it seemed that Kate had two main reasons for visiting the Bell home. The main one was she seemed to be out to kill John Bell Sr. Was he a bad man? Um, there's mixed reviews on that, honestly. Okay. So I didn't really dive into it a whole lot because I couldn't find like a An average up... man in the 1800s. Yeah. Questionable at best, probably. So, yeah, I didn't dive down too far into that rabbit hole just because it's a deep one to get into. Well, and it seems like you had plenty to go on without yeah, the rabbit plenty, hole. So. Plenty without that, yeah. And even more that I didn't really even get to get into as much as I would like to. But just, again, I'm trying to spare y'all a few hours of your life. <laughs> so, um, Will this be a long episode? Yes. Could it have been longer? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Could it have been multiple parts? Yes, without a doubt. But it's Spooktober, so. Spooktober. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So her main reason it seemed to was to like to be there. It seemed to be was to kill John Bell. Like one of the theories was he was at one point engaged to before he moved to Tennessee. He was at one point engaged to a woman named Kate, and then he killed her for whatever reason. And so she that was her spirit haunting them. I couldn't really find anything much else on that so i was like i don't know if this seems like an awful lot of speculation to me seems like what the rumor mill comes up yeah, with when they so don't actually like, know what's uh, happening yeah and that wasn't something i saw in a lot of places so i was like i'm just gonna not yeah so who knows anyway that was one reason so for what reason she had to kill him we don't really know because again we can't i'm not sure that that whole he killed a woman thing is real so we don't really know why Kate wanted to kill John I mean, Bell. she also could have just hated men. I don't know. Maybe, but also... And he was the one that was there. But here's the kicker. Okay. Um, Kate never really gave a reason as to why she tormented John Bell a lot. Or, and the second reason was, they. we feel, we as in the collective Bell Witch community, she wanted to stop John Sr.'s youngest daughter, Betsy, from marrying a neighbor boy named uh, Joshua Gardner. Again, don't really know a very good reason for that, but... She just didn't like the she guy. She didn't like Josh. So maybe she didn't like men. And so she just didn't want Bessie to get married. Listen, was like, don't do it. she heard us say men are trash one too many times and, and thought believed it. we meant all of them. All, not knowing that we ourselves are married. To, to men. men. <laughs> so, so over the next we three years... We say it satirically. Yeah. <laughs> over the next three years, Kate tormented members of the Bell family almost daily. John Sr. and his daughter, Betsy... Okay, for the record, anytime I say John, I mean senior. Was there like a junior yes, at some point, John but Bell he's Jr. like not involved? Yeah, well, not involved in my notes. But yeah, over the next three years, Kate tormented, he tor she tormented the whole family, but focused on John and Betsy, and they definitely got the worst of it. To what I could find out, I mean, she scared the other children, but Betsy's the one that she targeted out of the children. We don't really know why. So was Betsy, like, possibly a teenager during all of this? I think she... Well, yes, because she was engaged at one point, and they didn't do childhood, child engagements. Like maybe 13, 14 to 15, yeah. you know, but, like... Yeah, she was older, too. She I was, so was one of the older children. My guess, and I, I... Actually, I'm just kidding. That could have been a lie. She, I think I read somewhere she may have been the youngest... Well, the youngest daughter. That doesn't the youngest mean she's daughter. the youngest. It doesn't mean she's the youngest overall. Yeah. So sometimes when, like, kids are going through puberty, because during puberty you're in, like, a heightened emotional state because you got yeah. all these fucking hormones... Um, they can become their target. Yeah, they're more likely to have interactions because they're just putting off more emotional energy. So yeah, I wonder that if that be. is what caused her to be a target. And also she was being targeted because she was either preparing to be engaged to be married or just engaged to be engaged. married to somebody that this witch did didn't not like approve of. For whatever reason. Yeah. You didn't get the witch's blessing, so yeah. didn't know that was a thing we needed, but okay. I mean, apparently <laughs> <laughs> So let's see. Betsy had her hair pulled. She was pinched, scratched, stuck with pins, beaten, 
like everything. She came out to have a good time, and honestly, she's feeling so attacked right I now. Know. <laughs> and then, but so Betsy definitely got it worse out of the kids, but I feel like John got it worse as a whole. If that makes sense. I mean, the definite, witch did want to kill him. Yeah, so. and there's definite signs of possession with what happened to oh, John. Oh, shit. So John ha- began suffering from spells of like swelling of his throat um, and often feeling like he had a stick stuck sideways in his throat. I'm not a doctor, but that doesn't sound good. Yeah. And then um, later his facial muscles began having fits of like twitching and jerking and Kate would blast him because again, we can hear her. Okay. So... Kate would blast him with curses and hideous threats during these twitching spells. And over time, John became weaker and weaker. And of course, she's feeding off his energy, like wearing him down. So he be- just became worse and worse and weaker and weaker over time. So the witch was being successful in her quest she to was, kill him. Yes. <laughs> so Kate became notorious, as we know, and drew large crowds, continued to draw large crowds. She seemed to be very intelligent in many things, which is why this makes me think demonic, because she was no, she was intelligent in many things, including the Bible, people's past, the future. She would speak often of the future. Um, she was reported to be clairvoyant, which means she would be in more than one place at a time. Mm-hmm. For for a demon, that's just terrifying, right? And so she, there are reports of her being heard in two places miles apart from each other. She was also reported to be capable of shape-shifting, which is why I said that not cryptids. Oh, so the animals. The animals. A- air quote animals. animals. You can't yeah. see us. One of the first things that I read that was like the beginning of all of this was John Bell Sr. remembered seeing something that had like the body of a rabbit but like didn't look quite right you know kind of thing and he shot at it multiple times and it didn't seem phased it didn't do anything and he was really shaken up because it. it was the demon yeah the shape-shifting yes okay but she often remained invisible which i feel like she chose because i feel like that was more scary for the Bell i feel family. like she definitely had enough power to take a physical form but yes. was like <laughs> yes you can't see me um i Again, a rabbit hole that I didn't allow myself to dive down, but we'll get into it. Um, I'll talk about it briefly later on, too, but I'll go ahead and touch on it now. Um, There was a neighbor, someone in the community, somebody that they knew, a friend of the Bell family, who, uh, not a relative, but who um, came to try to help get rid of her and um, try attempted to kill her. And he... If I remember correctly, hold on. They attempted to kill a ghost. Which 18, demon? 1870s. Okay. 1870s. I just wanted to make sure I was they following. They attempted to get rid of her, but they used the word "kill her," "get rid of," because like, it was the to, 1800s. 1800s. So we didn't have. I don't think we had the word "exorcism" at that point. Maybe not. I don't banish. Know. Maybe banish, they were trying to of, banish yeah. her. Um. And so, and again, I. Can't, this is the ghost adventures episode I was telling you about <laughs> that I think we should watch after this. But um, in that it. episode, I talk about this a little bit later, so I'm, I'll hit on that later. But um, you, you learn a little bit more. I learned about this at that episode, and I chose not to try to find it on the interwebs because I would knew I would go down a major rabbit hole, and I'm just like, I'm not doing that. But he tracked her voice in a way or like tried to follow her and threw a blanket around and... I think John Bell Jr. wrote about this. You could see a shape like it. He caught something like something was in the blanket and tried to throw it into the fire. That's pretty freaky. Isn't like that crazy. Like you throw a blanket. Like, you a don't drawing. see anything. It catches on it, something it catches you can't on a, see on a form. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't like. And tried to I throw do that. not like this. Yeah. And he tried to throw that into the fire. Crazy, 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 crazy. And there's like a sketch of this like taking place that I think one of the family members drew um, and it was like detailed in like the recordings of all these things that have happened. So again, she often remained invisible and spoke out to them. Um, Again, I think that's because it scared them. And also that makes sense for like a demonic entity because to be clairvoyant and seemingly omnipresent and omnipotent, that would be scary, you know, because God is everywhere. And so this 
thing the seeming thing. to be everywhere would be very scary. This thing is already scary enough. I know, right? So, and the fact that John Sr. was a deacon, like, I, and she knew he had a very, like, he was a very spiritual person, uh. like, that would be very scary. So, um, her voice would be heard all throughout the cabin as if she were standing in all the corners and all the rooms at once. No. Yeah. So no I matter don't want that. where no matter where you were. It's like having an uncontrollable her. Google home. Yeah. In every room. In all of your rooms. In all the corners of all of your rooms. No, of thank you. House. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just you can't it's just doing what it wants. Yeah. So it would seem that Kate accomplished the mission she set for herself. And on December twentieth, eighteen twenty, John Bell died. How do we know how old he yes. was? Okay. Oh, wait, do we know how old he was? Yes. Mm, I'm sure we do, but I didn't write it down. Oh, I was just like, I'm so sorry. was he like old enough to be like dying of old age? No, or was he? Okay. He definitely was murdered 100%. By the ghost. I mean, I guess, I mean, in the 18, witch. in 18, 1800s, I'm sure he, yeah, I mean, yeah, probably old enough to be dying of old age, but you know. Did you, okay, but actually, so I learned this semi recently. If you made it like past childhood, even like back in ye day, you still had like a life expectancy of like 70 years. So it was yes. just that like beginning part also, that was I'm so rough. Sorry, y'all. I keep saying the 1870s. It's the 18 teens. It's 1817 is when this started. Because when I said 1820, I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. I'm 17. sorry. 1817 is when the hauntings started. Okay. 1820 is when John Bell Sr. died. My apologies. I have had some wine and I'm very tired. Anywho. It's been a week. It has been a week. Anyway, yes, on December 20th, 1820, John Bell Sr. passed away. It was believed that he was poisoned by Kate, and Kate took full credit. The witch poisoned him? The witch him? poisoned him. What a way to go. She took full credit. What? Um, yeah, she took full credit. In the Ghost Adventures episode, they read off an excerpt, I believe, from John Bell Sr.'s diary, journal, whatever. I can't. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember exactly where they said it was from. But she said, I gave old Jack a, do- a good dose of that last night and fixed him up. Yeah. I mean, I- yeah, it's definitely a unique Scary. way to go. Yeah. So it was believed that he was poisoned. There was a vial of a mysterious black liquid found near his body. So it didn't just like kill him with like, power, oh like my whatever. Gosh. Like actually Straight up gave poison him, him something. Yeah. First of all, found poison, put in a vial, brought to put, his. Yeah, produced poison, poison of some, in, in some general. Way, in somehow. general, some Who poison knows? appeared. Yeah. The demon got it. Came into possession of it. Mm-hmm. And then was able to administer. put it. Admi- mm-hmm. Yeah, administer the poison. Mm-hmm. Administer is the word I was looking for. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I knew that, but I feel like, yeah. I don't know. But so that also yeah. makes me think like this is this is not your average Ghost. ghosty spirit. This is not no. your average poltergeist. No demon. Yes, and we'll get to that. You have demons. Uh huh. At a, least at one. At least one. Mm-hmm. Maybe multitudes. So, yeah, that's always um, in like when you're like talking to ghosts or something, and they're like, "How many of you are there?" The word multitudes for some reason uh, yeah. I am afraid of. Yes, yeah, it's scary. Mm-hmm. I don't want multitudes. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. So that happened in December. The following March, um, Betsy broke off her engagement with Joshua Gardner. So the ghost got what, or demon, whatever. Got what she wanted. Kate got what she wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, which I have here, which an event Kate often demanded of Betsy while she tormented her. Um, when the engagement ended, Kate left the Bell Farm, but she promised she would return in seven years. Um, That's very specific. Yeah. Also, seven. What is seven? A lucky number? Nero something? It's, I think seven is it seven? That is supposed supposedly like a biblical number. I mean there are a lot of supposed biblical numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Seven is definitely seven something is, and like, I don't know. Yeah. So she said she would be back in seven years and she did return. She returned in eighteen twenty eight for a few weeks and during her visit she came to the home of john bell jr and had long talks with him about the past also like had long talks as if he he was like expecting her and was like a friend but no no but how do you turn away a demon that's like yeah i'm coming back in seven years how do you say no no thanks like no actually i'd prefer if you didn't we have no vacancies for demons at that that time um could maybe you stay at a holiday inn instead yeah so he had long talks 
um, about the past, the present, and the future. She made some predictions for the future, although we don't really know what. Um, Kate also said there was a reason for John Bell Sr.'s death. However, she never said what the reason was, um, probably just because she felt like it, to be completely honest. And after the second visit, so I guess she came once and came again, but like after the second visit, she said her next return would be in 107 years. And that would have been in 1935. Um, I don't really have much on that. But it's believed that she never left the area and just took refuge in the cave on the Bell's property. And that is thought to be a possible... And that is thought to be possible because of the strange things that have happened in what has come to be known as the Bell Witch Cave over the last several years. And if you were wondering, that's our connection to the outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. In season 10, episode 5 of <laughs> Ghost Adventures came out in 2015. They visit the Bell Farm and the cave. They get rare, they received rare access. At that point, very rare. I don't know if they've allowed things like this more often since then, but at that point, it was very rare for the people who own that property to allow, um, especially film crew or something like that, in. So that was pretty cool. It is honestly one of the most freaky episodes I have ever seen. I'm so excited to watch it. <laughs> I'm excited to watch you watch it. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, yeah. So um, I feel like it's like scary movies are to sad as scary ghost adventures episodes are to piss. Yeah. So um, in that episode, you can you get to see an ancestor of the man who attempted to, to kill the witch. Um, That's pretty cool. You get to watch him. Like go, describe go it. Into the oh, cave. He, he goes, goes in. in. Okay, if I was the ants, I would not I, be going you know, in. Yeah, and Zach Bagel Bites had a good point at one point because I watched the recap while I was doing my notes. Um, like actually, you do. earlier today because that was the fin- fi- finishing touches I wanted to add. That I told you I needed to do. Yeah, yeah. I it included watching pieces of it. I fast forwarded because I was like, I'm looking for a specific thing, and I was looking for the guy, and I was like, heck yes, okay, that's what I want. That's what I wanted. Um, and you you get to see him go in there and he does confront the witch and um he says zach bagel bites says at one point um if there is a person alive today that this witch still hates it's him it's like it's this guy because he has the blood of the guy he's not just an ancestor he's like a grandson type of like a great grandson of type like a direct like a, a descendant he has blood, like, like yeah i don't yeah i think i think that if like you knew if i knew that a, it took a lot of convincing an entity <laughs> had killed one of some you know someone in my bloodline yeah but i think it was also kind of a thing of like proving you know like in home alone where the the kid goes down I'm and says not i'm not a <laughs> yeah, I think I think I don't think he approached it that lightly, but I think he was like, you know, if my great great whoever in the 1800s can face this and tr- and try to better life for this family, I think I can face and say like you're never going to do this again. Like I'm not. I'm still here. That family bloodline is still here and we're not going to we let that happen. We outlasted you, bitch. Yeah, we're not going to let that happen. And let's just say some shit goes down in that episode. Oh, no. <laughs> and it just scares the life out of me. So it is crazy. Um, and that's just kind of where I'm leaving it. Um, I highly recommend watching that episode. And that's the Travel Channel link and the resources that you can go and check that out. Um, they also, there's another descendant of the Bell family. A li- not Their last name is not Bell, so it's a more indirect but still a distant long distant relative of the bell family or it could just be on like the the mother the mother's side, side. Yeah. yeah so like um, the woman line yeah. instead of the male because we don't yeah. get we don't yeah historically keep our last names so yeah so um there is a, another descent there's a descendant of the bell family in that episode that they do an interview with which is really cool um you get to see the inside of the replica of the cabin um, it is a replica. The website that they run says it's a replica. So, um, yeah, that's the Bell Witch. On a very small scale, barely scratched the surface. I'm so glad that we got to do this. 
I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad it. that you did it for Spooktober because it was such a perfect <laughs> time. To be completely honest, I was sitting at dinner with my in-laws and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about because it has to be good. It's Spooktober. It's Spooktober. We and have I've to already, do the best things. I know. And I've already done like Waverly. I've yep. already done the Stanley. I'm like, crap, I'm running out of ideas here. What am I going to do? And then I was sitting there and it just landed in my head. Like it was just so it was, was like, heck yeah, we're doing it. Your brain knew something new something that this new was the thing the to do. Yeah. Okay. This was fantastic. I'm so hyped. I'm glad. Are also, I learned so many things. Yes. Red River Gorge in Kentucky, same river. And I'm so sorry. Again, 1817 Not to 1821 seven. is when the hauntings took place. Not the 18. 18- 70s. Either way, the 1800s is when the this took early place. The 1800s. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm very tired. It's yes. late. And again, I'm going to give another shout out to the sources that I used because, again, a lot of this was paraphrases and I got a lot of, I got everything from these places. Okay, so like, the, so the Ghost Adventures episode, that's the Travel Channel um, link that I have. Haunted Tennessee by Alan Brown. It's the full name is Haunted Tennessee Ghosts and Strange Phenomenons of the Volunteer State by Alan Brown. Um, we okay. Also, we just like need that book. If anybody know, wants to buy right? us that book, yeah, and let then us also, know. Bellwitchcave.com. That is the official site of the cabin, the home, the place, and like the the cave and all of that jazz. And then Wikipedia for like a timeline. Um, there was also another one. It, it's very misleading. It was bellwitch.org. Okay. Uh, or, yeah, the bellwitch.org or something along those lines. But it's just, it seems like a fan club, like somebody oh. who's like super into it and like, like has a list of like all the, like all kinds of books and things on it. So that would probably be a good place to go if you want to know more about like yeah. what works have come from the story. It probably has like um, if there are any documentaries yeah. or any other like ghost investigations that you could watch. Yeah, but there's several like places where they say like they're just compiling that information. Like it's 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 not like we affiliated. didn't make the information, but we're yeah. compiling it for other Bell Witch Cave yeah. fans. And they're not affiliated with the organization or the group of people who own actual property okay or any of that so they are separate but it is pretty cool to see yeah. too i didn't pull a lot of info from it so i didn't have it in the list originally i'll try to get it in there um before this goes live but um yeah that's where we're at super super excited i hope you guys loved it as much as i did i was so <laughs> excited that you chose to do Finally this did, ah. <laughs> there have been like several times where i thought this Bell was Witch. going to be our episode and then really? it wasn't so i didn't know that i think it might have only been just been once but like one or two times i'm still excited i'm glad i'm ah. glad i broke away from doing cryptids i did cryptids like twice in a row so i'm glad i did some something got spooky. some spook 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 Happy spooky season, everybody. Happy spooktober. I hope you're enjoying our extra content. If you haven't already, make sure you're following us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at NSGOPod if you want to know everything that's happening during spooktober because (laughs) it's not all going to be announced here on the pod. You might have to check out the YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. which you can also subscribe to, the Not So Great Outdoors. Just search it on YouTube. You'll find it. You'll see our lovely faces. That's where we started. That's where we started. That's where it all started. Yeah. I had a lot of fun on International Podcast Day posting like our journey I through podcasting. That. I almost cried. I was like, this is it was, precious. It was a lot of fun. Um, we love. We've come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we have some audio issues, we've come a long we've way. We've come a long way. And by the time. We used to use our onboard mics on our laptops on a discord call in our own apartment our own apartments in the very throes of the panini so yeah. like when none of us knew what was happening we were yeah. all just terrified working from home lockdown. yeah yeah like we ha- weren't even in the same room yeah it's wild. Yeah. And then the first time we ever recorded in the same room, we were on like bar stools. Yep. With still with no mics using. No, the we had board. a mic. We had a we mic. We had a mic that we shared. We sat on the table in between us. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. 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 And then when we bought our mics we use now, we thought we were hot shit. And I still think I, we're I hot still shit. Think these we're are hot great. shit. <laughs> these are great mics. I love these things. Yeah. We just aren't audio engineers so we don't know what the hell we're doing it's so. definitely the software but i don't know how to I fix don't. it 
I don't know what we're doing. If you understand a software that we can do video, audio, and have two USB mics and not have strange issues happening, please send us an email. Yeah, that does we don't not know what include we're doing. purchasing an expensive soundboard. If you have a cheap soundboard alternative, we are all ears, we but will. it has to have a USB input to go into the computer. <laughs> because again, we we're balling on a budget over we're here. We're on a major budget. We're just lucky that Piff has an extra room that we can record in. It worked out. It did. But thank you guys so much for listening. Find us on all the social internets at NSGOPod. If you have a spooky story and you want to share it to us, DM us. Go to our website, thenotsogreatoutdoors.com, and fill out a contact us form with your thing. Also, check out the, that website for all of the sources and the full links, as mentioned several times in this episode. Or, because I don't want to get in trouble for being like, she didn't show her sources. Yes, I did. I just didn't in the middle of the episode. Yeah. The link is also in the notes of the this description or in the video description, depending on how you're enjoying you this content. You literally can't miss it. It is everywhere. We're giving you so many opportunities to see our sources. We are yes. citing our sources. Yes. Please don't yell at me. <laughs> you can also email us your own spooky stories at notsogreatoutdoors.com or at gmail.com. Skipped, the, say, uh, skipped that part. Yeah. Not so great outdoors at gmail.com it's hard isn't it to or do the if, outro it sucks I hate doing the outro we should just pre-record we this. could we really should we probably should but we haven't yet so I'm gonna just keep going and then I can cut going. it off at alright guys we hope you liked it and in the meantime stay safe out there and then we can be done and I don't have to just struggle bus these <laughs> outros and if you enjoy the show please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts we really appreciate all of your reviews and we read every single one and by we I mean I and then I send to have the good ones because because I'll cry yes I'm way too emotionally invested so please leave us a review you can just like hit the stars on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes depending on if you're like on a computer or on your phone yep um, or you can write us words. We read them. We love getting emails. We started getting emails from listeners like all over the place. I got to send out like stickers all over the United States last week, which was super exciting. So please continue to email us, send us your stories, send us your suggestions. We appreciate you. We love you. And in the meantime, stay, stay safe, safe out, out there. there. Thanks for watching. Music by Purple Planet. Art by Ruby Congrove. Logo by Katherine Dodds. For more information and our sources, head over to thenotsogreatoutdoors.com. For updates and announcements, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter at NSGOPod. Don't forget to subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. <laughs>